Hey everybody, and welcome back to another one of Mudflap's movie reviews. My name is Mudflap, and today I'm going to be sharing with you my rankings for every single one of the Spider-Man movies leading all the way up to Spider-Man No Way Home. So to start off, I'll start with Sam Raimi's Spider-Man starring Tommy McGuire as Spider-Man. I'll give this movie 7.5 out of 10 Mudflaps. And the reason I give it that is mainly because of how much I love Willem Dafoe's portrayal of Goblin. It's just an amazing portrayal. Willem Dafoe just does an amazing job at capturing just how sinister and evil and how obsessed that Goblin is with Spider-Man. Another reason why I give Spider-Man 7.5 mud flaps is because of Tobey Maguire's portrayal as Peter Parker and Spider-Man. In my opinion, I think... Tommy McGuire is the best Peter Parker. He, he's just the best nerd um, out of all of them. And his Spider-Man is really good too. He definitely relies a lot on his spider sense, his ability to climb walls. Um, just using his web for a lot of different uses. Uh, really thinking outside the box, using his scientific brain to really figure out how exactly he can use his gift that he has to the best of his ability. For Spider-Man 2, I will give it 7 out of 10 mud flaps, and the reason why I'm doing that is um, I really loved Doc Ock a lot. He's a super solid villain. Some say that was actually the most comic accurate portrayal of a villain uh, that we've seen so far. Alfred Milani did a great job. It was just a great storyline to continue to just see Spider-Man grow as a character, Peter Parker grow as a character and meet new villains and face new challenges. So Spider-Man 2 is a great addition to the Sam Raimi trilogy. And now time to talk about Spider-Man 3, the infamous third installment of the Sam Raimi trilogy. When I first saw this movie, I didn't really like it very much, um, mainly because they made Peter, Peter Parker into you know, an emo goth guy, and I didn't really like that. It took me out of the movie. Um, because we get to see a symbiote combined with Peter Parker, so that changed his characteristic. But um, I just didn't like it for a long time. But it's grown on me over the years, and now Bully Maguire, as he is known, is an internet sensation. Uh, tons of memes made about him, uh, YouTube parodies. It's just it's this great. But um, I'll give Spider-Man three six and a half out of ten mud flaps, and I give it that because, like I said, I didn't really like the emo. Peter Parker, and I think there's a little bit too much going on with the uh, villains. Um, not a whole ton of backstory, like if you knew the comics you would understand these characters, but they threw in, you know, three villains at one time. But we're moving on to the Amazing Spider-Man uh, movies, which was directed by Mark Webb, and Andrew Garfield portrayed Spider-Man in these movies. Um, I'm going to give The Amazing Spider-Man 6.5 out of 10 mud flaps. The reason why I give it that is I didn't really like Andrew Garfield's portrayal of Peter Parker as much. He wasn't a super nerdy guy. He was really confident and cool at times, which is not Peter Parker. Um, but I loved his Spider-Man. I thought his Spider-Man was different, mainly because they really emphasized his strength a lot that I hadn't really seen in the other Spider-Man movies. And to uh, Andrew Garfield relied a lot more on science, and we got to see more of a scientific brain power in these movies. So um, yeah, it was a it was a good installment. The Amazing Spider-Man two, I'll give that six and a half out of ten mud flaps as well. Uh, the reason why I give it that is once again it's a good movie. It's not great. Um, I just feel that this movie they kind of copied Spider-Man three, and they added a whole bunch of villains. At the last second, you know, we didn't really know much about these people. Oh, well, they're villains now. So uh, then we got to see Rhino, which was only like the last five minutes of the movie, which I would have loved to see more of Rhino. And sadly, there wasn't an Amazing Spider-Man 3 movie. So um, I am hoping to see Rhino in the future. The main reason why I like The Amazing Spider-Man 2 the most is the scene with Gwen Stacy at the end, the heartbreaking scene that we all know about. Um, and um, I think the reason 
why that was just so hard to watch was because we hadn't seen anything like that before. It really embraced the darker side of Spider-Man. Next up is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. So Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is directed by Peter Ramsey, Bob Persichetti, and Rodney Rothman. And for this movie, I will give it eight and a half out of 10 mud flaps. And the reason why I give it such a high rating is for two reasons. One, it's storyline and the animation. This movie actually won an Academy Award based off of its animation. I didn't know how to feel about this movie in the beginning. I'm not a huge fan of cartoon animation and comic animation. I'm just not really impressed by it that much, but this movie blew away my expectations. The animation is flawless. It's just amazing. Over the top animation, and of course we got to see a whole bunch of different kinds of uh, Spider-Man show up. We got to meet Miles Morales, and people have been clamoring to see Miles Morales show up in the future, especially in you know future Spider-Man movies, maybe get his own solo movie. We also got to see a beloved classic Spider-Man villain, Kingpin, who was voiced by Liev Schreiber. Yeah, his character was just, it was awesome and heartbreaking at the same time. So now I'm gonna go into the last two Spider-Man movies, which were directed by John Watts and um, Tom Holland, plays a Spider-Man in these movies. So for Spider-Man Homecoming, I'll give it a seven out of 10 mud flaps. Uh, I give it that because as Peter Parker's pretty good. You know, it's a nerdy Peter Parker that we all know and love. I like Tom Holland's Spider-Man to a degree. I think there are times he relies a little bit too heavily on his tech and not enough on his Spidey abilities. And then for Spider-Man Far From Home, I'll give that movie seven and a half out of 10 mud flaps for a couple reasons. One, I like how they continue to build on Tom Holland's character, his Spider-Man. He's taken a lot more responsibility and pressure um, due to the events of Endgame and just him stepping up to really be an Avenger. Jake Gyllenhaal plays Mysterio uh, in this movie, an awesome villain, and he just, he just blows it out of the water. Jake Gyllenhaal is an extremely talented guy. It was pretty comic book accurate for Mysterio, the costume, the whole persona, everything about it was perfect. Spider-Man Far From Home also set up for the future Spider-Man movies, leaving us wondering what's next. So um, I'm definitely looking forward to Spider-Man No Way Home to start answering those questions of now what, what's next. So thank you everybody for taking the time to watch my Spidey rankings video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Also feel free to hit the subscribe button if you want to check out any more of my other videos and I'm also keeping up to date on my future videos. Also feel free to drop a comment below. Let me know what your Spidey rankings are and uh, also let me know who your favorite Spider-Man is. I would be very interested to know that too. I'll see you next time.